first hour of Hurricane Katrina, we lost power immediately. And then we began to hear the winds and what the, the damage of the winds and what they were doing because they were tearing our buildings apart. And that's when the water began to come into the, um, the rooftops and, and through the wall. And that is when we knew we were in trouble. That was within the first hour. We heard the entire apartment complex being torn apart. I chose to stay here um, with my family being uh, in Houston, Texas because I don't have any children or anything like that that I really have to be responsible for so I can basically stand on my own if I need to go to the hospital. I don't have to have anyone to take me or do other things. So I'm basically able to physically handle staying here in New Orleans, um, you know, with the way things are now. It's just still a, a little bit of a struggle, but I can take care of myself. Everybody out here are homeowners. It's very few people that are here renting in this area. And the neighborhood is absolutely wonderful. A lot of people have moved back into the neighborhood. A lot of people have rebuilt their homes. So it's places like this that show that they've come back. It's showing and should show the world that we are coming back. One of the great things about my sister allowing us to use her home as a storage unit has been that it's giving us hope that we are moving forward, that we are rebuilding in a more positive way and basically putting Katrina behind us um, and moving forward to bigger and better things. So when you're reading Not Just the Levees Broke, I want you to think about it. If Phyllis Montana LeBlanc can survive this, then so can I. She was down, but she stood up. She hurt, but she healed. And that is what I want to convey to everyone that reads Not Just the Levees Broke. There's nothing that can stop you from being a stronger person and realizing your purpose here on earth. And that is to stand up, to be strong, and survive.